So good evening, everybody, and happy anniversary. Tonight, tonight we have so much to celebrate, starting with the landmarks and accomplishments of this foundation's first 35 years. And even more importantly, the thousands of people, the donors and the volunteers, the board members, the staff members, nonprofit leaders, all those whose gifts and whose passion over three and a half decades have brought us to this, this wondrous and momentous anniversary. And of course, we also celebrate our movement's head-spinning advances, advances in, in transgender rights, in employment protection, movement in public opinion, and even the fact that on a certain Friday just a few weeks ago, a few months ago, June 26th to be exact, when a little case called Obergefell came down from a certain court, Justices Antonin Scalia and Clarence Thomas had really bad days. And of course, we also celebrate the extraordinary people who have made all of this possible. And tonight, tonight, it has been our profound privilege to be able to recognize just a few of those people, people whose courage and whose leadership truly inspire us all. Evan Wolfson, you're out there somewhere behind the lights, right? Evan Wolfson, you have changed the world. I remember, I remember as no doubt you do, Evan, and probably everybody else in this room, I remember the mad and splendid day that Obergefell came down. And amidst all of the, the cork popping and the hugging, for a moment I found my thoughts drift back to a woman named Sharon Kowalski. Now to some of you in this room, that name probably means a great deal. And to others of you, probably not very much at all. Back in the early 1980s, Sharon was in a very bad car accident and, and she was left with severe disabilities. And although she and her, her partner, Karen Thompson, had been together for years, they'd exchanged rings, but it was 1980s America and they couldn't get married. And so what that meant, of course, is that when tragedy struck, they had few protections. And a court a court not only denied Karen the guardianship that she sought, but instead awarded it to family, family of Sharon's, that proceeded to cut off all of Karen's contact. It took eight years of heartbreak, suffering, litigation, even a national protest movement to bring Sharon and Karen back together again. After Obergefell, after our complete marriage victory, the kind of enraging tragedy that engulfed Sharon and Karen, it need never happen again. And instead, we get to replace it with the unbounded joy of a thousand, of 10,000, 100,000 weddings, because we are indeed, and even in Rowan County, Kentucky, we are indeed <laughs> free to marry. Our movement, our movement is in many ways it's like a river, a great river whose origins lie somewhere deep in an often dark and often difficult past. And together, together we made it through some terrible rapids and some perilous currents. It's been a long, long journey. But today, our victories have brought us to a place that's a little more calm, a little less treacherous. And yet the time for courage and leadership is clearly not over, as the incredible bravery and the struggles of, of, of Gertrude and Kareen and Supi and every one of our honored asylee and refugee guests here tonight make all too clear. Countless LGBT people are, are still harassed, humiliated, hurt, murdered, just for being LGBT. And whether we look at Syria and Cameroon or the Tenderloin or the classrooms of our nation's schools, it is plain that it would be naive to think that the river will be smooth from this point on. And still, and still, this is a new moment, a historic moment. We've come to a major bend in the river. We've reached a point, a point, a moment when the LGBT community and the movement in this country is finally at a point where we're moving from being endlessly buffeted by forces beyond our control, be those schoolyard bullies, or right-wing crazies, or simply an unbreachable wall of prejudice and ignorance. We're moving from there, we're moving toward a time when we move history more than history moves us. 
We are moving toward a time, toward a time when we are no longer just hoarding threats, but we are advancing and setting our own agenda, a time when we, at last, we are taking control of our own future. And that future, our future, it needn't be limited solely to the task of taking down one by one all the bad things that happen to LGBT people, the violence, all the violations, the vitriol. Our community our move, and our movement must always be about more than simply what it is we are against, but also about what we are for. And let us remember that we are part of a great human movement, a movement for equality and for justice, for life and for love, for truth over lies, for hope over hate, and for simple and universal human dignity. And it is this vision, it is this vision that has led Horizons Foundation to launch the campaign that you've already heard mentioned a couple of times tonight, the Now and Forever campaign. And on the occasion of Horizons 35th anniversary, at this crucial point in our history, this big bend in the river, we are really thrilled to be able to share with you about this for the first time publicly tonight and to do that with all of you. All successful campaigns have at least three make or break ingredients. And the first, and what many would say is the most crucial of those, is leadership. And in that, this campaign and Horizons have been beyond blessed by the superlative leadership of longtime community activists and philanthropists, Susan Lowenberg and Joyce Neustadt, and Scott Hafner and Bill Glenn. The second ingredient, the second ingredient are generous donors in that first early so-called quiet phase of the campaign, the, the, the campaign phase that we're ending officially tonight. And to date, more than 50 individuals and couples have made commitments to this campaign, every one of them generous. Many of them described moving led by the donors as the largest gifts they've ever made, and by more than a few as, and this is even more moving to me, as the gifts of their lifetime. The, The third ingredient, the third ingredient, of course, is vision. And the vision for this campaign, Horizon's vision, is not just some simplistic notion of a perfect world. The world's not perfect, and you know, I hate to break it to you, but it's not likely to become perfect. <laughs> Horizon's vision, Horizon's vision, rather, is that our community, that we and future generations, that we have the means to secure equality, justice, and dignity for all LGBT people, here and everywhere. That we have the means to help and to take care of our brothers and sisters in need. To ensure that equality means not only equality before the law, but it means equality in every single aspect of life. And to ensure that leave no one behind doesn't turn out to be a paper slogan. It is a commitment we know we can keep. <laughs> my friends, my friends, we, we have so often struggled and fought and lost and won with, with little more than pennies. We've been so busy coping with crises and fighting off the wolves right outside of our own doors that we've had almost no time to think truly big or truly long term. And I tell you that the opportunity that we have today to secure our future is historic, it is magnificent, and it is now. And it's we, you, me, together, and thousands of others who have the power and the privilege to turn that opportunity into reality simply by including our community the community that so many in this room have done so much to help to build and that has in turn given so much to so many people for so long, including that community in our state plans. The Now and Forever campaign is one more thing. It is a promise to future generations, to the world that they will inherit, to the world that we will deed to them. You know, when you come down to it, when you really think about it, there are only two great gifts that we, can leave to future LGBT generations, just two. The first of these, and the greatest, of course, is a world as free from discrimination and violence and injustice as possible against LGBT people and all people, is to get as far down that river as we can. And that's what LGBT organizations are doing, and with the help of all of you, Horizons is funding each and every day. The second gift, the second gift, it may seem more prosaic, but if we seize the moment, if we seize this moment of historic opportunity, it can be nothing short of transformative, and that, and that is the simple gift of capital. 
of financial resources for all of the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. It's the means to help future generations navigate the river of our movement, whatever bends and twists and turns lie down the river. And they, and they, as have we, as did, as did those before us, they'll master this river's rapids and they'll tame its currents until one day, at long, long last, one day this river, our river, will reach the sea. When two women wed in Zimbabwe, when two men marry in Russia, and it is cause only for celebration, we will have reached the sea. When trans people need not fear for their lives every time they step outside their doors, when, when our youth know only acceptance and our elders know only respect, when black and brown LGBT people and all people have truly equal chances of living long and healthy lives, then, then we will have reached the sea. Imagine, imagine just for a moment, imagine after so many years, after so many sacrifices and so much struggle, imagine this river reaching the sea and our knowing, each one of us, together with our, our, our movement's pioneers and the millions of the, who will follow us, each of us knowing that we are where we deserve to be all along, proud, equal, strong, and free. We will get there. Not all of us who are here in this room tonight are going to live to see that day. But that day is coming closer, closer than it's ever been. It's coming closer because of people like tonight's incredible honorees. And it's coming closer because of people like all of you. My friends, we have momentum. There's no doubt about that. We have, boy, do we have momentum. But momentum is not destiny. Our future is still up to us. And so for every time you give, thank you. For every time that you believe in what's possible, every time you help right or wrong, every time you speak out against injustice, every time and every way that you help build Horizons Foundation, every way that you invest in our community, every time you inspire others, every time you embrace the struggles of not only those who are right outside our doors, but the struggles of those who live all across this flawed and unjust and yet still glorious globe. Thank you. For all of these, for all of these, I thank you. For all your gifts and generosity, thank you. And in these thanks, I am certain that the thousands who benefit from Horizon's work throughout the year, that they thank you too. And though I cannot speak for them, and please know this, know this deep down, future generations will thank you too. And finally, and finally, and please know this too, deep, deep down inside from all of us at Horizon's Foundation on this marvelous anniversary, thank you, thank you, thank you.